Greetings. This is a um, comment I found on my AI and transhumanism uh, video. And one thing is the uh, elite for at least 25, 20, 25 years now have been pushing that um, we can upload our souls into machines. So here's the comment. I'm going to read it. We ask how God can allow this, but we are the ones allowing it. We have been duped and falling for the lies of the elites and ball worshippers since our conception. We get fooled and then blame God for the consequences. Now, here's my note. That is why the... Um, Satan wanted to lead the children of Israel into sin because once they sinned, God would allow Satan to punish them. Or sometimes God himself would punish them. All right, so here's the next part of the comment. That's the end of my, um, my note. Didn't Daniel say that iron and clay do not mix? You cannot upload your spirit. And it's talking about uh, my note, uh, it's talking about uploading your spirit into a machine. So he, he continues to write, the life is in the blood. My note, that's in the book of Leviticus. It says the life is in the blood. You shall not eat it. Um, people that drink blood, um, now there's people that actually do that. And uh, they trying to be vampires, you know, like the junk on Hollywood movies. You live forever. Yeah. So, all right, back to his comment. I think it's a him. The life is in the blood, not in the machine. It's not about money. This is one of the biggest deceptions. Money does not really exist. That is why the love of money is so evil. It is a ruse, a lie. And yet people will trade their soul for it. Money exists in the mind. You think you have something, when in fact, without Christ, you have nothing. Bob's note, amen. <laughs> Very well said. All right, let's continue with the comment. There have always been, quote, depressions, unquote, and, quote, stock market crashes, unquote. But what really happens is that the elites make a decision that suddenly money is worthless. They need that ruse to get you to accept what they have in store for you next. More unemployment, low wages, etc. They will just say, be glad you have a job. Just thank God there is no recession. You see, they want you to believe you are dependent upon them. They want you to believe that you are dependent upon them and all of their devices and not upon your creator. Bob's note, amen. In 2008, there was a quote unquote crash. They made up some cockeyed reason for it. Suddenly there was no money. Well, where did it go? How could it just disappear? Why didn't they just print some more? Do you see what I mean? They appropriate and we simply accept their assignments without thinking. We blindly accept the claims of false, ill-meaning experts that are irrational, nonsensical, make-believe. That is what this whole life is about. Do you let them make you uh, do you let them make you believe their lies? Or do you trust your creator? The only truth there is. Bob's note. You know, they parade all these experts on their media networks. I mean, let's face it. There's basically, you could argue, five or possibly six companies that own 95% of the U.S. media and all the major media. I mean, you know, uh, ABC, which uh, my nickname is All Bullcrap. 
NBC, nationwide bull crap. And then there's CBS. You know, you, you see with your eyes. When you want to see BS, you turn on CBS. And then, you know, CNN, Facebook, Twitter, um, and all the rest, you know, they're all owned by the same tribe. And who controls Wall Street and the stock market? You know, people, when Clinton was president, I used to be able to go down to a restaurant, a restaurant, and get a breakfast for a dollar. No, it did not include coffee, but that was eggs, toast, and potatoes. And, you know, it was a decent sized breakfast. You know, two eggs, two toast, two pieces of bread, and, uh, you know, a cup full of potatoes, I guess. Yeah. Now you you go you you can't find a breakfast under five six seven dollars. That's because every time they double the money supply by printing more, the value of your money decreases by half by fifty percent. Think about that. I learned that in economics. So you know, and they keep doubling the the money supply, triple. You know, that's how that works. So. That is, uh, you know, they're experts, right? Now, th that's another thing, too. When, when there's a certain amount of money invested into Wall Street, when a stock mark, when a stock crashes and somebody loses money, well, the money just doesn't vanish. That means somebody else made money. Think about it. When the, um, when the big banks, Wells Fargo and Bank of America, when they uh, lost money in 2008 on the, the, the housing market, uh, the government just printed more money and bailed them out. And you know what? There was an insurance company, I think it was AIG, that insured the Twin Towers when they were destroyed. And they were wanting to destroy those buildings and rebuild them. But because of all the asbestos in them, I mean, you got to pay a company like $250 an hour per person to clean up asbestos. Well, guess what? If there were planes or explosives or whatever uh, and the building came down, um, the government paid for the cleanup. But not only that, I think it was AIG, the insurance company, that paid, I think it was $2 billion dollars in insurance on the building, two billion, that's two thousand million dollars. And when AIG was um, wor their stock was worth just a couple of pennies a, a share, the government just printed more money and handed it to them and said, you know, this insurance company's too big to fail. We can't have that. And then all of a sudden, overnight, uh, the stock went from pennies on a dollar to being worth whatever it is today. You see how that works? Um, and yeah, somebody from the tribe owned AIG and somebody from the tribe owned the uh, Twin Towers. So see how that works? All right, let's continue. That's the end of my notes. Um, let's go back to this comment. Just wait until they produce that perfect storm that they have been waiting to perpetrate upon us. First, they will set the stage, and then they will let her rip. My note. You know, that's what Hollywood does. 20 years in advance, they'll come up with some kind of a movies, a theme, and then, you know, like 20 years later, they implement it because, you know, they don't call it TV programming for nothing, right? All right, back to the... That's the end of my note. Let's... Re, uh, all right, let's read from the beginning. Just wait until they per produce that perfect storm they have been waiting to perpetrate upon us. First, they will set the stage, and then they will let her rip. You see, they always prepare with conditioning first, and then they attack. The aftermath involves a lot of explanations as to why this misery has come about, and that, in the end, you are responsible for it, and you have to pay. 
People eat that up. They accept the responsibility for the stock market crashes. They were too greedy and wanted something for nothing, and the market got bogged down, imploded, etc., etc. And for global warming, they accept that they are at fault and have to pay for their mistakes, faults, and sins by giving up more and more of their free time and money to taxes. Soon we will be, we will be taxed. Soon we will be taxed for the air we breathe and the CO2 output, carbon dioxide, and the output for ourselves and our children and above all for our animals. And, will we, and we will be fine with that because they said it was all our fault and we accept that. See how stupid people are? What do we, ha uh, what do we have thousands of politicians to govern us for if all they do is blame us for being obedient to them. Do you not see the hypocrisy? Wake up already. After their engineered storm, which will not be long in coming, we will all be devastated collectively, globally. Then there will be another stock market crash. We will all lose our jobs. Then they will reveal their man of sin. Uh, my note here. The man of sin, son of perdition, the Antichrist, the beast are all names for, uh, well, the Antichrist. Then will they, re uh, that's the end of my note. Then will they reveal their man of sin. He will say we must put aside our individual wants and needs for the greater good. He will be our savior. We should take his mark so we can continue to buy and sell as money has no value anymore. The mark will lead to death, of course, but so many will take it, what with their false hope in a rapture that never took place in all. They will lose their only hope in Christ and take that mark. And it will be a mark and not just church on Sunday. You see, money is a bauble, a token bestowed and taken away at the whim of the elites. It is bling that people are intensely obsessed with having. It is the key to living and surviving in this rotten, fallen world, which they call life, but is not. Soon the mark will become that key. Jesus said, if you love your life in this world, you will lose it. Money is a ruse, and so is the mark, a trick. Trust in God and not man, and quit believing that money is the cause for all this. It is not money. It is greedy bloodlust for your soul. It is the revenge of Cain. He wants you to pay for his sin. They reject Christ's sacrifice. That is why they are sacrificing us. Well said. I couldn't say that any better. All right. Well, I hope uh, you enjoyed this comment and I appreciate your putting up this comment. I just now saw it. There's a lot of times um, everybody comments on my site and I don't see it. I don't get any notifications. And then maybe months later or years later, somebody else will comment on that site and I'll look through the comments and boom, there it is. I never saw it. So, all right. Well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus Christ, his precious name. Amen.